Hello everyone and welcome back to my Ultimate JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video, I am going to attempt the Send a Crew to Moon Station mission. Um, it isn't especially lucrative, but at least it only requires two crew, and we should demonstrate our ability to crew our moon station, I feel like. So I'm going to pick it up, and the question is whether we can get it done within the kind of price range that we are going to get paid. Certainly we can't do it in the advance, but, you know, I don't want to actually lose money on it. So let me see what I can cook up, and hopefully we won't risk the Kerbals too badly. I will try to build in some redundancy. Alright, so here is what I've got. This is the Mooner Leo. Of course we need a Leo because it's two people, two Kerbals. And we do want to still attach power to the station, so basically we've got this sort of Gemini thing, but we're, uh, with the long nose, I mean. Uh, we've got two battery packs here, and it'll dock, and then we've got a docking port so that we can just undock and leave that there. So that will be the plan. And Delta V-wise, we've got plenty. Uh, this tank here uh, gives us 1,955 with vacuum ISP, and that's because of the spark engine. We've got backup ants uh, so two ants as a backup system this place is really really packed we've got mob propellant tanks we've got the food and water we've got uh, nitrogen there we've got oxygen over here and we've got the antennae i went with these antennae because i don't have to um, deploy them and also they were relatively cheap for antennae and they still did the job so they're even relay antennae so it's great so we've got those, and uh, the burn time for this is 5 minutes and 14 seconds. We've got it on high engine quality, of course. The ants are just regular quality because we don't actually expect to use them, except in an emergency. Uh, hopefully we don't have to deal with that. I think this is the first use of the Terrier, I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, I'll make it a high quality one. It's our transfer engine, we go to the moon with it. So basically, of course, we still have the problem with the heating, so we need to make sure that when we come back from the moon, we get into a low orbit around Kerbin first, and then come back down. So that's what this stage does. This is breaking orbit from the moon and getting into low Kerbin orbit before coming down. Uh, this stage is getting us to the moon and uh, basically making orbit maybe I think uh, actually thinking about this I was gonna put some shielding but I'm not gonna put shielding oh we, we already have mod propellant in there maybe I can just not have the mod propellant tanks that's a lot of mod propellant um, it'll save us some yeah I don't think we need that much mod propellant okay so yeah we'll see so that could potentially help with rendezvous burns as well the terrier engine and then we have the rest of the rocket, and we're using two of the Bobcats because it's cost efficient. And uh, they burn for, I mean, about 200 seconds, so 3 minutes and 20 seconds. And we have this uh, Prometheus tank here because we want to attach the boosters, as you can see. And otherwise, we have the balloon tanks on top. So, that is the idea. And what could go wrong? Of course, it's within our limit, but barely. And, well, not as bad as last time. And we just need two crew. We've got a controller on there, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, I think we'll send dude bus. Maybe an engineer would be good. Let's send dude bus and Bill. All right, yes. Farmers in space. Space farmers. Alright, uh, so this is the Delta V reading, uh, 5,300 about. That should definitely get us to orbit. And But on at sea level, pretty high thrust weight ratio, so we could probably throttle down the Bobcats, but we want them for control just in case. Okay, so let us launch. Well, we still have like limited crew control and not connected here just like in the previous episode so one thing we solved was uh, people have told me that the problem in the Kerbin station episode was the um, Kerbal joint reinforcement interfering with the engineering mode so I'll just have to turn off KJR in the menu before doing engineering things 
uh, so that's fine. But the comm situation I have no idea about. So uh, at least we have limited Kerbal control. How limited? I always forget how limited that li limited Kerbal control will be. Anyway, hopefully our farmer and Bill will do their job. Ignition. A little bit of... Oh, the throttle isn't working as usual. Okay, launch. Alright, let's give it a little bit of throttle there. Alright. Oh, let's just pour it on. Well, I can control the rocket, that's what's important. But we can't create maneuvers right now. I don't know, uh, we had had this problem before and it solved itself, but I don't know how. I don't know what triggers it or what undoes it. Okay, off go the boosters. Really, this uh, rocket is probably o OP for this purpose. Maybe we could have even put just one bobcat. It'd be a little bit pressed right now, though. We can't throw down too much, otherwise we'll hit the time limit on the engines. I mean, it's not a limit limit, I know, but... Okay, and that's... Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. That's, uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, uh, I actually wanted to deorbit the stage, but that's obviously not happened. Uh, I pressed the wrong key because my throttle doesn't work. Whether Kerbal actually reads my throttle seems to be a random sort of thing these days. So I can't create a maneuver node, right? Or can I? No, I can't. Well, now we have comms. I don't know through what. Moon mission. Well, Chuck Yeager seems to be working. Well... I'll try and deorbit it anyway. It's probably not a great idea, but I'm going to light it, bring that periapsis down, chuck it, and then proceed. Oh, engine fail? Well, it still should work. God, these bobcats sure do fail a lot, huh? Okay, well, that should definitely dispose of it. Let's turn around. We actually have RTGs at the top. We don't even need the solar panels on the side here, apparently. We're recharging right now, overall. It's a bit of a surprise. I thought the RTGs alone might not do enough, but they are. Well, with SAS on, it's not enough. So there's that. Okay. Separation of the stage. Okay, and prograde and throttle up. Okay, we are back in orbit with that. Um, go around one more orbit, maybe. It depends. Uh, well, we we can plot the maneuver now, and it won't go away when we lose communication or something. Now we have to rendezvous with the station. Station was in a sort of convenient orbit. Okay, well, we'll do a mid-course adjustment after that. Might as well plot everything now. We got something like that. So, checking out the details, we've got 1,550, let's say, just a 5 meter per second there. And then 330, let's say, we'll ignore the 5 meter per second and build it in. Uh, 330, so that's 1880, and then when we meet up with it, there's just uh, about 100. We'll have to do that with the next stage. Okay, so that'll be fine. Let's wait in orbit, extend the panels. 41 ignitions, so no problem there. One, and go. Nice blue flame. Okay, final part of the burn. Ah, not that way. Let's correct the CS here. 
Well, I guess that'll be as good as we get. Okay, so we've got the make course adjustment next. Let's make sure it's doing what we want it to do. Uh, nothing seems right anymore, but we still have comms, so we can fix it. Okay, so we'll do that next. They seem fine. Um, let me make sure we're getting warnings about any storms that might happen. Um, storm, yeah, we need to find out about that. <laughs> Uh-oh, we could have been in trouble. Uh, they still happen, so we will find out. In shadow. Solar storm in progress, in fact. We're just in shadow right now. Okay. Um, well, 3% radiation already. Well, Dudeba says 3% radiation. Phil does not. Am I gonna regret not putting on the shielding, or are we gonna be okay? Okay, that says tail to the sun as I can get. Let's proceed. And we'll pay attention to the radiation. That's the end of the storm. I think that's okay. Okay, that should be good enough. Okie dokie, we could get rid of the nose cap. Uh, well, a little bit of debris and probably high velocity debris now. <laughs> I feel like oxygen consumption is a little bit higher than I was expecting. And water and food. I thought we had like 12 days worth. We're only in day one. Yeah, I thought it said we had 12 days worth at least of each of those things. But it looks like we have much less. Well, we have to let it catch up, I think. Let's see. Or no, it's got to be ahead of us. So we could get into a lower orbit or we could just wait it out. I think we should just wait it out. We'll basically expend this stage and then do the rest later. And go. Okay, that is that stage. And separation. Ooh, those panels could uh, potentially done damage to the solar rays if could have done that. Okay, so let me replot here. Uh, in fact, I think we'll take that right there. So we'll just do that with the RCS, I believe. Okay. Okay, let me just safely ignite this. All right. Well, that's the wrong side, I believe. Or, well, there's a docking port there. I guess we could use it. I think there's docking ports on either side. This might be the better side to put the batteries on. With some sort of sense of parallel. Okay. It is the wrong side because the habitable area is on the opposite side. But I just wanted to attach the batteries, so. Oh, come on. Magnetism. Oh, please. <laughs> Stop teasing. Come on. All right. Okay, so we have docked. We have fulfilled the contract. Okay, we might as well see if there's some other contract that goes on right about now. And maybe, yeah, we'll see. I should have sent a scientist since we have a mobile processing lab, but we're probably not going to keep these two here anyway, so. All right, let's go to Space Center. No, it doesn't have anything special for us to do right now. So I think we'll just uh, bring them back. Must have an unmanned crewed space station with empty seats. Uncrewed, surely. Okay. No evacuator station, huh? Okay, fine. Uh, Alright then.
we should test whether we can bring them back safely, so we are going to do that. Okay, so as unfortunate as it is to have brought them all the way here just to bring them back home immediately, uh, that is our goal as far as testing this system is concerned. And we're probably going to depart over here, so we'll wait a bit. Have a direct line back before undocking, and of course we'll leave the batteries. The contract did not say that we had to leave them there for any amount of time. They probably should have, but... Okay, we still have our supplies. We have 2,107, so... That should be enough. We're not rendezvousing with anything in low carbon orbit this time, after all. We don't want to go in the atmosphere. Just outside the atmosphere will be fine. Okay. Well, that should do the trick. Plenty of... plenty of everything. We had plenty of everything, really. And... just a little bit of stress. 7% radiation, 4% radiation. Making this all reusable somehow would be nice though, just so we can bring everything back. But can't figure that out yet. Not with the parts we have, it didn't seem simple to do that. I'm definitely lacking conical parts, I've noticed. Conical fuel tanks. I want more conical fuel tanks. <laughs> of all sorts of aspect ratios and stuff like that. Okay. Well, the closer we are, the easier the next burn is. So, we'll go to about there. That seems fine. And once we see the sun, we'll make sure to point our rear end at it. For safety's sake, you know. Okay. More or less there already. Okay. Heading back home. I do swear the the food, water, and oxygen consumption is faster than I was expecting by a lot. So, caught by surprise by that. We'll double check that in the VAB, the reading. Maybe I just looked at it wrong or something. Okay, not in the atmosphere. And 9% and 7% radiation now. 11 and 8. Okay, we are approaching periapsis where we have to bring our orbit nice and safely down. Maybe we'll hang out in low carbon orbit just so that maybe we can land in daylight at the space center. Pitching down to control that periapsis since we've passed by so much. Okay, I'll cut there since the periapsis is too low otherwise. And... Well, we want to come down close to the space center. I think that's a good idea for a recovery value. So we'll wait and let's start bringing the orbit down here. We've got 300 almost and then we have the RCS on top of that. The periapsis is all the way over there though. Um, that's sort of not exactly the way I wanted it. Let's see... We'll be past the KSC. I didn't do it right. Okay, separation of the service module. Okay, at least it didn't bump back into us or do anything weird. Very important. Alright, here we go. Bill and Dubis coming back. Bill and Dubis's excellent adventure. 
We've started to get some heat here. I mean, I guess we're not too far away from the Space Center, but we're not exactly where I wanted to be. Let's just not hit any mountains, please. Okay. We are through it. And... The parachutes have us down to 4 meters per second because we're using the radio chutes and they're OP for this. Uh, yeah, so... Pretty good, but I'm still puzzled by the comm situation, the fact that we didn't have comms at our space center. Uh, hopefully, maybe by the randomness of Kerbal, that will be fixed next time. I don't know. Well, if it isn't, we're just gonna keep doing crude missions, so... That's why we need a space shuttle. See, uh, the, the thing is, NASA had the same problem and couldn't launch probes without crews, so they created the space shuttle. That's the theory. Nice trees. We need a space shuttle so that we can launch probes with crew so that we can have comms. <laughs> well, no particular science or anything, but we fulfilled the contract and we did it without breaking our budget. So recover. And we also tested the system. Okay, so I was a little bit puzzled. Oh, we're over a million in funds now. But I was a little bit puzzled by our situation with the food, water, and oxygen. So let's make sure we have two Kerbals inside and take a look here. See, it says, oh, maybe, but this is uh, the a different day scale. This is like the half day and I'm still on the 24 hour day. Uh, these are 12 hour days. So complicated. Maybe it's because these are 12 hour days, but still, it seemed like it was more than that, the consumption, because this would still be eight days and we were pretty low after only two days. But yeah, it said 16 days, 12 days, and 13 days there. So yeah, a little bit puzzling, but we'll leave that be. Maybe it's because of the 12 versus 24 hour thing. All right, so a nice clean episode of Ultimate Jane SQ, and we'll leave it here. And next time, we'll see our contracts and see what they suggest we should do. And one thing we could do is get some more science, maybe. Um... The next R&D building upgrade is 3.38 million. At least we got the 900,000 one. Anyway, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you next time.